Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala amma ba'd as we come to a benefit this evening walhamdulillah we would like to share some benefits in regards of love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving each other for Allah's sake and Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu he reported the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said none will taste the sweetness of faith None will taste the sweetness of faith until he loves a person only for the sake of Allah and until he would rather be thrown in the fire that can or that he can be thrown in the fire than to return to disbelief. Naam. None will taste the sweetness of Iman until he loves a person only for the sake of Allah and until he would rather be thrown in the fire than to return to disbelief and until Allah and his messenger are more beloved to him than anything else. And this is the sweetness of Iman, ya ayyuhan nas, that the person he loves his Muslim brother for the sake of Allah, not because of what he has of materialistic gain, not for any of those reasons, not for any worldly reason, but for the reason of his iman, his belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is mutafakun alayhi. You can find this in Sayyid Bukhari, Rahimahallah. Abu Harara radiallahu anhu reported the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Inna Allah yaqulu yawm al-qiyamah ayna mutahabun bi jalali. Really Allah will say on a day of resurrection, where are those who love each other for the sake of my glory? Where are those who used to love each other for the sake of my glory? Today I will shelter them in my shade. On a day when there is no shade but mine. Allahu Akbar. So loving your Muslim brother for the sake of Allah. And aiding him for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذه النعمة هذه العظيم This is a tremendous blessing يا أيها الناس That a person he loves His Muslim brother And the sisters they love They Muslim sisters For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And عن أبي هرارة رضي الله عنه reported the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, whoever would be pleased to taste the sweetness of Iman, then let him love a person only for the sake of Allah. And this is something that needs to be emphasized because you find individuals only loving the person for what he has. Only loving the individual based upon materialistic gain. This is not the true love. This is not real love, ya ayyuhannas. But the real love, the true love, is that you love the person for the sake of Allah. Seeking Seeking nearness to Allah. Seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you love a person, 
you come to his aid. And when you love a person, you aid him. You support him. Whoever will be pleased to taste the sweetness of Iman, let him love a person only for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what our deen is based upon. This is what our iman is based upon as well. Our iman, our faith is based upon love for the sake of Allah. Having love and affection and coming to the aid of your believing Muslim brother only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not to gain any praise or to big yourself, big yourself up to make you appear as if you are someone or to belittle your Muslim brother or to throw something in his face and say, yo, I did this for you, so what you going to do for me? What is it in it? What is it in? What is it for me? What are you going to do for me? We don't look for what you can do for me, but we look for the rewards. We look for the ajr. We look for the reward from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. As Abu Huraira radiAllahu anhu he narrated, he Abu Huraira radiAllahu anhu he reported. The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wa salam, he mentioned, Sab'atu yudhiluhum Allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhillu. There are seven whom Allah will shade on a day when there is no shade. There are seven individuals whom Allah will shade on a day when there is no shade. Who are these seven? There are a just ruler. A just ruler. A youth. A youth who grew up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A youth who grew up <clears throat> worshiping Allah. He grew up with this tarbiya, with this education of worshiping Allah. This is all he knows. Coming to the masjid, reading the Quran, sitting in the durus, learning about Islam. A youth who grew up in the masjid, a, grew, a youth who grew up in the worship of Allah. And one whose heart is attached to the masjid. One whose heart is attached to the masjid. And two who loves each other. And they meet and they depart from each other. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They meet each other. They meet each other. They love each other. And they depart from one another for the sake of Allah. They meet each other. Yes, salam. Salamu alaykum rahmatullah. Salamu alaykum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you doing, Akhi? How you doing, Akhi? How's everything? How's your family? How is your health? To read shay. To read shay. Is it anything I can do for you? You hungry? وَهَكَذَا يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ Two who loves each other and they meet each other and they depart from each other for the sake of Allah. <clears throat> and this is what needs to be emphasized especially in our communities because many of us hearts are hard. Many of us, are, our hearts are hard towards each other. We have Yani, we are rough with each other. So we need to be gentle and to be mindful of each other and to be sympathize, to sympathize with each other. So a man who 
loves each other and they meet and they depart from each other for the sake of Allah. And a man who is tempted by a beautiful woman of high status, but he rejects her. A man who is tempted by a beautiful woman, she has high status and prestige. <clears throat> or in any rate, a beautiful woman. She comes past the store, seduces and waves and, 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 and gestures. Right? She come past the store and, and wave and smirks and smile and, you know, walks with a walk. And she talks, yani, flirtatiously. A man who is tempted by a beautiful woman of high status, but he rejects her. And, you know, some women, they are saying to themselves, hi, this, you know, what is, you know, he rejected me? I'm this and I'm that. I have this and I have that. But your, your, your Islam, your Iman won't allow you to approach her. It won't allow you to give in. It won't allow you to get the number. Your Islam, your Iman, your fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't allow you to be tempted by her or to get her number or to talk to her. May Allah protect us. And also, as, as it is mentioned, as we mentioned, a beautiful woman with high status, but he rejects her saying, I fear Allah. He rejects this woman saying, I fear Allah. And one who spends in charity and conceals it such that his right hand does not know what his left hand has given him. Or that he doesn't know what his left hand has given. And one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in private and he weeps and he cries in private out of the reverence and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abu Darda reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as saying, no two men love each other for the sake of Allah. مَا مِنْ رَجُلَيْنِ تَهَابَ فِي اللَّهِ تَهَابَ تَهَابَ فِي اللَّهِ No two men love each other for the sake of Allah behind their backs but that the most beloved of them to Allah has the strongest love of his companions of his companion no two men love each other for the sake of Allah behind their backs but that the most beloved of them to Allah has the strongest love for his companion of companionship they love each other they greet one another they enjoin bir wa taqwa tu'awun as it is mentioned as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says tu'awun tu'awun ala al-birr wa taqwa and join upon each other taqwa righteousness wala ta'awun madha and do not and join upon each other sin and transgression don't come together to sin or to transgress to commit sins and disobey Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He reported the messenger of Allah. Alayhi salatu wa salam. He said. No two people love each other for the sake of Allah. But that the better of them. The better of the two is the one. With the strongest love for his companion. And when you love your companion. When you love your Muslim brother. You say ya akhi. I love you. I love you for the sake of Allah. When you love a person, the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, tell the person that you, tell your companion, 
Tell your brother that you love him. Or no two people. No two people love each other for the sake of Allah. But that the better of them, but the better of the two is the one with the strongest love for his companion. Naam. And also, as we mentioned, Al Munawi, Rahimahallahu Ta'ala, he commented on this narration. He said, The strongest of love for his companion, meaning for the sake of Allah and no other worldly purpose, not because of status. Not because of money, not because of any of those things, no worldly purpose. He affirms love among the rights that are obligatory in the bond of fellowship, in the bond of companionship. The criterion of it, that he treats him as he would love to be treated. He treats his companion, he treats his brother, she treats her sister the way that she wants to be treated, the way that he wants to be treated. For whoever does not love for his brother, what he loves for himself, then his brotherhood is hypocrisy or that which he claims to be, he claims to be, to have, or to want brotherhood, then his brotherhood is upon, is not upon truthfulness or righteousness, but rather it is upon hypocrisy, ya ayyuhannas, and it will be against him in this world and then hereafter, and we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the best companion to Allah is the best the best companion to Allah is the best to his companions to his slave the best companion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is best to his fellow companion to his fellow brother and she is the best to her fellow sister and the best neighbor to Allah is the best to his neighbors so we want to reach the status of being brothers for the sake of Allah loving each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he reported the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, a man set out to visit his brother. A man set out to visit his brother in another town. So Allah sent an, Allah sent an angel to watch over his steps. When the angel came to him, he said, where are you going? He said, where are you going? The man, he said, I am visiting a brother of mine in this town. So the angel said, do you have a, a favor? The angel, he said to this man, do you have a favor over him to be repaid? He said, no, only that I love for the sake of Allah. I love him for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angel, he said, I am a messenger from Allah to tell you that Allah loves you as you love him. So we, we, does, we don't, and this shows you, F1, this shows the person that this companion went to visit the person not because of something of worldly gain or any of the sorts 
Not for any of those reasons. He didn't go to he didn't go visit him to get repaid from 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 something. But rather he visit the person for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the angel came. So the angel, he told him that I, am, that I am a messenger from Allah to tell you that Allah loves you as, as you love him. Allahu Akbar. So this is what we need to be upon. This should be our stance with our brothers. This should be our stance when we come in contact with our brothers. And the sisters, they come in contact with their sisters. That they love them for this reason alone. Only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is mentioned. Obeyed ibn Abdul, Obeyed. Ibn al Samit, Radi Allahu Anhu reported the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He mentions, My love is a right upon those who love each other for my sake. My right or my love, my right upon those who love each other for my sake. My love is a right upon those who visit each other for my sake. My love is a right upon those who sit together for my sake. My love is a right upon those who maintain relations for my sake. Loving each other, maintaining relationships with each other, maintaining this mutual love that we have. Towards each other that we maintain it. And this is what Allah loves. So we are trying to do what Allah loves and is pleased with. Mu'ayyad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. Reported the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said. My love is assured for those. Who love each other for my sake. Who sit together for my sake, who visit each other for my sake, and who spin on each other for my sake. And in another narration, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, Those who love each other for the sake of my glory will be upon pulpits of lights, admired by the prophets and the martyrs. Allahu Akbar. Admired by the prophets and the martyrs, the prophets of Allah, the martyrs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. It doesn't get any greater than this. That if we become real brothers for the sake of Allah, brotherhood, loving each other, visiting each other, spending upon each other, spending time with each other, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be upon pulpits and they will be admired by the prophets and the martyrs. Allahu Akbar. Amr ibn, Abba, Amr ibn Abbasah reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my love is, a, is right upon those who befriend each other. Those who befriend each other for my sake. My glory is a right upon those who, do, who, those who, do, who defend each other for my sake. Defending your Muslim brother in his absence. Someone says something about him and you know that it's not him. You know that it's not true. 
You defend him in his absence. Whoever defends his brother in his absence, Allah will protect your face from the hellfire. Defending his, his honor, coming to his aid, defending him. This is only for those who believe. This is only for those righteous servants of Allah, those who pray, those who come to the masjid. Do you do the, is it the same for a, a Muslim brother who's out in the street? Is that the same kind of love? Is it the same kind of love for a Muslim that's out in the street drinking, partying, clubbing? He's into and he's into he's into a lot of different things. Is that love the same? What is the difference? What is the difference here? This love. Is that love the same that you love a person? You love your Muslim brother? He's Muslim, walhamdulillah. Allah knows best. He's in the streets, he's in the club. He's out, you know, doing whatever. Versus your Muslim brother who is striving, practicing, praying, trying his best to fear Allah, coming to the masjid. It's not the same. It's not the same. You don't treat the Muslim that is out in the street. You don't treat him different than you treat your Muslim brother who is a striving, practicing Muslim, who is known to be in the masajid. He is known to come to the durus, to classes. He is known, he is seen to be learning and studying and practicing. You can see the nur, the light upon his face. You can see the truthfulness that he is upon. Is it the same? It's not the same. That you love this Muslim brother that's striving, practicing Muslim, you love him for the sake of Allah. But this Muslim that is in the streets, into the club, he's getting money and all of this. Your love is not not is, is not not the same like the same love that you have for this striving Muslim brother. You hate what he's doing. You hate the fact that he's that he hustles, he sells drugs, he smokes, he has multiple girlfriends, he's into all kinds of things. You hate that about him. You hate that this attitude that he has about him. Or maybe he doesn't pray. You don't see him coming to the masjid. You don't see him coming to the masjid. Is it the same? Is this love that you have for this Muslim brother the same same love as this Muslim that's into all kinds of things? billah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said really Allah will have an audience on a day of resurrection sitting at his right side on the throne and both sides are honored as the, as the right they will be upon pulpits of light and there will be light upon their faces and yet they are not prophets, nor are they martyrs, nor are they disciples. But they will be honored by Allah. They will be on light in pulpits, and they will be honored by the prophets and the martyrs. They are not prophets, they are not disciples, nor are they martyrs. And it was said, O Messenger of Allah, who are they? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, Tahabuna bi Jalali Ta'ana. Tahabuna bi Jalali. Subhanahu wa Ta'ana. 
The companions, they asked the messenger of Allah. Who are they? Those who love each other for them for my glory. Those who love each other for them for my sake. These are the people that will be on pulpits. And they will be spoken about by the prophets and the martyrs. Subhanallah. Umar radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, really among the servants of Allah are people who are neither prophets nor martyrs. Yet the prophets and the martyrs will, will admire them on the day of resurrection due, their, due, to, due to their position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to their status by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to their status. They are not prophets. They are not martyrs. The companions, they ask, they ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are they? The Messenger of Allah he said, those who love each other for my glory. Not because you are the bros. Not because you're with this one, this group, and this clique, and this brother. Not because of no kind of status or fame. But we love each other. You know that this, pro this brother is upon the sunnah. You know that this brother is striving to be upon the sunnah. He takes from the ulama, the, 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 the scholars of the sunnah, past and present. You know this about him. But you skip over him to hang with him. To be with this brother or to be with that brother. Really among the servants of Allah are those of the people who neither, they are neither prophets nor martyrs, yet the prophets and the martyrs will be admired by them. They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, tell us who are they? The Messenger of Allah, alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are people who love each other with the spirit of Allah, or they are, they are those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Despite having no shared family relations or wealth, they are not related. They came from totally different backgrounds. They are not related. Never, perhaps never even saw each other before. Perhaps only met each other in the masjid, in the best place on earth. Perhaps only saw each other coming to and from, walking by. Perhaps Mumpkin. Maybe even saw someone. Maybe you saw him at a, you know, shopping at a grocery store. Only saw you. Only saw him for one split second, one time. Met him one time, or saw him a few times out of your life. But the connection was there. As soon as you saw him, subhanAllah, that's a good brother right there. You exchanged numbers and met up and went out and went to classes together. Went to Umrah, Umrah together. Went to Hajj together. Praying together. Eating together. It is mentioned by Allah there will be light on their faces and they will be upon light. They will not fear when people are afraid and they will not be sad when people are grieved. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he recited the verse. Certainly the allies of Allah, Allah inna awliya, Allah inna awliya Allah. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Certainly the allies of Allah will have no fear, nor will they grieve. So this affair of being brothers, this affair of coming to the aid of your Muslim brother, this affair of being united upon the correct Islam, being united upon La ilaha illallah. 
being united upon this kalimat, ya ayyuhannas, working together, striving together, not separating over petty issues, things that can be worked out, things that ha- that can- is room for uh, for work to work it out. Leave room for some islah, from some rectification. But you have people that don't want rectification. They don't want togetherness. They don't want togetherness, but rather they want separation and turmoil. And they say things like, it's only two Salafi masjids, wa'iyadu billah. It's only two Salafi masjids. It's how the kalam. Where you get this from? It's only two masjids that is upon the sunnah. You determine that? You make that determination? Or Allah is the judge? Allah makes that determination. Did you look inside of the individual hearts? Do you know what's inside of individuals' hearts? Individuals are following the sunnah, practicing Islam, trying their best. You making accusations like this, ya ayyuhannas. This is heavy. This is a heavy statement to say it's only two masajids upon the sunnah. We're from the people, we're from the ulama that act like this or that talk like this. Who from the ulama that talk like this? Do, do you hear Sheikh what they mean, Rahimahullah? Did you hear him talk like this? Did you hear Sheikh bin Baz talk like this? Did you, did you hear any of the ulama talk like this? Ya ayyuhannas. Did you hear them say it's only two masajids that is upon the sunnah? Did you, did you hear them say only the haram, only Mecca and Medina, only us? We are upon the sunnah and every masjid is not. Did you hear the ulama talk like this? Past and present. And be brothers. For perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have mercy upon us. May shower his mercy upon us. We have no, no room for separation right now. We are in a weak state. Don't you see the state of the Muslim? Don't you see what state that we are in? Of crimes, separation, adultery, fornication, all kinds of fawahish, mis- and misundication, mis- miseducation, and all kinds of things that we are faced with. You want to stand in front of the, uh, the community, in front of the brothers and the sisters, and tell them that it's only. Two massages that is upon the sunnah. All the things that we are faced with, instead of uniting and coming together and working out those differences, settling, settling the differences that we may have between each other. Old people, list old people. Listen, understand, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has servants who are neither prophets nor martyrs. Yet the prophets and the martyrs admire them for their position, for their position and closeness to Allah. On account of them, be sabibi ta'a, be sabibi mahabba. For this reason of loving each other for the sake of Allah, for the sake of brotherhoods, gathering in the house of Allah, visiting each other, loving each other, spinning on each other, being concerned with each other, 
being concerned with one another. Not that you be concerned with only your crew, your clique. No, you be concerned with the Jamaah, with the Ummah. We are concerned with each other, with our brothers and our sisters. It's not that you are just concerned only with those who you concerned with. So there are people far, far away, lands in different tribes. They have no close familiar, familiarity, familiar. They, they don't know each other. They have no relationships between them. They sincerely love each other for the sake of Allah. Allah will place them on the pulpits of light on the day of resurrection and grant them an audience and he will place light on their faces and light on their garments. People will be terrified on the day of resurrection, yet they will not be terrified. They are the allies of Allah upon whom there is no fear. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون On them is no fear, nor shall they grieve. No fear or grief. يا أيها الناس أين محبة Where's the love? Where's the concern? This is what we are upon. Brotherhoods. Loving each other. Loving each other. We are, alhamdulillah, we are practicing the sunnah. Inshallah ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, we are following, following the Quran and the sunnah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah continue to aid us and to guide us and to direct us. Alhamdulillah. We are striving and trying. We're not giving up. Despite our weaknesses. Despite the weakness that we have in, in, within ourselves. We are weak servants. We are disobedient servants. But we're not giving up. We're still worshiping Allah. We're still coming to the masjid. We're still taking and reading the hadith of the messenger of Allah. We're still listening to the ulama. Ishhada. Abu Umama radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said a servant does not love another servant for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah will honor him. But Allah will honor him. We want the honor from Allah. We want the izzah, the izzah and the honor comes from Allah. The izzah, the honor, it comes from Allah. It doesn't come from individuals. It doesn't come from who you know, who you be around. Like they say in the streets, what set you clean? What set you clean? Subhanallah. It seemed like it's the same, it seemed like this is what individuals is upon, the brothers. What set you clean? And if you ain't down with that, that set, you off of it. You get warned against. They make up something. They get a fatwa from their sheikh. And it's out there. Now it's out there. So and so is, you can't take from them. Can't listen to them. Subhanallah. A servant does not love Another servant for the sake of Allah, but that Allah will honor him. Abu Umama radiallahu anhu reported, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, whoever loves for the sake of Allah, man ahabba lillah, wa abgadillah, wa abgadillah, wa atalillah, wa mana'alillah, فقد استم فقد استمسك فقد استم استملك or ماذا whoever loves for the sake of Allah من أحب لله whoever loves for the sake of Allah and he hates for the sake of Allah and he gives for the sake of Allah and he withholds for the sake of Allah he has perfected his iman 
is is iman. He has perfected his iman. The person he loves for Allah and he hates for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives for the sake of Allah and he withholds for the sake of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person has perfected his iman. As it is mentioned, Rahimahallahu ta'ala, wa abgadilillah, that he hates for the sake of Allah. It does not mean he harms the one he hates. And individuals they get it confused and mixed up. You know, when they when they hate a person, they go to the extreme and they hate. That that he hates for the sake of Allah, it does not mean he harms the one he hates. Rather, the hatred is for disbelief and disobedience. That you hate. The person of disbelief, of kufr. And that you hate the person who disobeys Allah, of disobedience. You don't hate him for any other reason other than that. That he hates. His hatred is for disbelief and disobedience. Not that you don't hate me because I'm not with you. You hate me because I'm not down with you. I'm not a flunky. Huh? huh? I'm not with you. Oh, so that's that's why you hate me? Because I'm not with you? No, our deen is based upon yani this. Mahabbat is love for Allah and hating for Allah. And withholding for Allah and giving for Allah. Our deen is based upon this. That if you see your Muslim brother disobeying Allah, you hate that from him. And if you see him leaving the deen of Allah, disbelief, or any kind of of any kind of, or a form of disbelief, you hate that. You don't encourage it. Or you not you don't just be keep quiet, tuck it under the rug. He saw you do something, so you don't say nothing. So you don't say nothing. You saw him do you saw him do something, so you don't say nothing. Y'all, y'all both ain't saying nothing. Y'all both committing crimes, but don't say anything. And joining evil upon each other. Like you don't say anything when your brother do something that's haram. You don't say anything when he do something haram, but you praise him for all the good. Knowing that what he's upon is corruption and evil. He may be, you know, doing things Allah knows best. But you don't say it, you don't say nothing. You just, you know, just, just, you know, you tuck that under the rug. Al Bara ibn Azib, ready Allah anhu, ready Allah anhu. He mentions we were sitting with the messenger, we were sitting with the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, which handle of Islam is the most trustworthy? They said prayer. The messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, it is good, but that is not it. Prayer, it is good, but that is not it. They said charity. The prophet, he said, it, it is good, but it is not it. They said fasting the month of Ramadan. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, It is good, but that is not it. They said Hajj. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
Repeat it. It is good. But that is not it. Accent. That is good, but that is not it. They said jihad. The prophet, he said, it is good, but that is not it. Really, the most trustworthy handhold of iman is to love and hate for the sake of Allah. Naam. And Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he reported a Bedouin asked the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether it is, when is the hour? So the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, what have you prepared for it? The, so the man, he said, love for Allah and his messenger. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, you will be with those whom you love. You will be with those whom you love. And we will stop there, inshallah ta'ala. But this is something that needs to be emphasized of loving each other, having true, sincere love for each other, loving for the sake of Allah, coming to the aid of your Muslim brother and sister for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what needs to be emphasized by the Nilahi Ta'ida. I call him at Tesma'un. Astaghfiru Lali wa lakum. Fastaghfiru. Inna hu hu al Ghafur Rahim. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiru wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.